Hello and welcome to mini episode 307 of Real Life Ghost Stories and I have three spooky stories for you today and the last story comes from August the 2nd 2023 and story number one comes from Penelope. I have a couple of Glitch in the Matrix stories. I was at a restaurant with my mom and we were going to take some food home so she scooped the food off her plate and into the bowl. When she was done with the spoon it was completely clean. Keep in mind that this was a curry so the spoon would have been really dirty. My second one was me and my mom were packing a gift box and we attached the letter to the box and then we put the box in a box and we made sure everything was in there and then we taped it up. My mom grabbed her planner, it was on the table next to her to get the address. When she had written the address down, I picked up the box to send it to the person and lo and behold, the card was out of the box. But it doesn't end there. The power went out for a split second and when it came back on, the card wasn't anywhere to be found. So we opened up the box and there it was in the box, not taped to the other box, just in it. This next story contains the death of an infant. And my last story happened when I was around 9 or 10. I was at a Girl Scout camp and I had a really bad migraine and the counsellor that was holding my hand got up to go walkie-talkie the health centre. I thought she had come back and held my hand, but for some reason it felt like I was barely off the ground like only enough to not feel the rocks. So I opened my eyes, but I could barely see because of the migraine, but I thought I saw a figure that was white or gold, but I couldn't tell. And when the counsellor came back, the sensation of being held stopped. Later in the night, I had to sleep at the health centre. I realised that it felt like someone I knew, but I couldn't put my finger on it. It felt like they were two to four years older than me. When I got home, I asked if there was anybody that much older than me, and she told me that I'd had a cousin who died a day or two after I was born, who was three or four years older than me. And to find out if it was her or not, I asked my tarot cards and my pendulum, and they both said yes. So that's how I found out who my spirit guide was. I'm loving Glitch in the Matrix stories at the moment. Um, If you follow me on TikTok, you will see that the wonderful Laura shared a Glitch in the Matrix story on Facebook that then happened to end up in the Facebook group and Laura also happened to be in the Facebook group and saw her story being shared. And then I stared, shared it on TikTok and it sort of went semi-viral on TikTok. And people are like arguing in the comments about what happened in this Glitch in the Matrix story. And I love them. I just think they are so mind bendy. And I'm really interested in them at the minute. And Penelope, it sounds like you and your mom both witnessed your completely clean spoon, but also the letter that was not in the box and then was in the box. And I think it's probably easier to manage a glitch in the matrix when somebody else experiences it with you. And if your guardian angel is ever going to make themselves known, let me tell you, the time to make yourself known is when you have a severe migraine. That is the time. So your guardian angel gets a big thumbs up from me. And story number two comes from Alva. Back in mini episode 163, you shared the story of my daughter. When she was a toddler, she would tell me about before how in her last house she had ladies who dressed her and she had sash windows in her house. I always found it fascinating that she could share such details but as she grew older she didn't mention it anymore and I for one was absolutely fine with that. Last year I went to check out a venue for a camp that I was organising. It is a big beautiful old house dating back to the 18th century with a sweeping avenue, a Doric portico with shallow bows to either side white window surrounds and a hip roof. A stunningly impressive building in the Irish countryside, one that I've never set foot in before that day. Even having driven past it many times, I'd never really seen it as it is so far off the road. The day I was to go check out the house and grounds, it was a beautiful summer's day, so I bundled up my three girls and off we went. The two teens were moaning about being removed from their rooms and unplugged from their phones. The little one was asking her usual 101 questions a minute and like any overwhelmed mother I was fielding questions and complaints as best I could while steering us in the direction of the house. I almost missed the turn with all the distractions. As we passed through the weathered slanting stone pillars over the bone-shaking cattle grid and drove up the pothole-littered dusty gravel drive, this feeling of just knowing started to build. I can't describe it other than I knew where I was. I've been here but more than that I knew this place. A strange familiarity grew the closer we got to the house. 
I parked outside the impressive facade and I knew, I knew I had opened that door before. I knew what the lock inside the door looked like before the door was opened. I knew the layout of the house, the fireplaces, nooks and crannies where the kitchen was, what rooms were off to the left and the right and up the stairs. I found my way around this huge house as easily as I did my own. My children, of course, made a show of me and ran off to explore. As they vanished throughout the house, I was given a tour. I knew there was a secret door in one of the rooms which led to the library before I was shown. I knew before a door was opened that it led to an enclosed courtyard garden. Outside, I knew where the stables were. But not only the stable, I knew what it looked like in my head before the door was opened. I knew this place inside and out. Feeling like I was having some sort of -of out-of-body deja vu, I kept my mouth shut and just followed around in awe. Certain things didn't make sense, like they weren't supposed to be there, or rooms were laid out wrong which inexplicably annoyed me. At one stage, I went to gather up my wayward children who had decided to play hide-and-seek. I found one of them in a room upstairs. She tried to show me the way out, and I told her no. There is a hidden door through another room, which led to a stairwell, which brought us down to the kitchen. It wasn't that it was particularly frightening. In actual fact, that big old house felt warm and inviting, like an old friend you haven't seen in a long time. Familiar and easy to settle into, it was just the strangest experience. I've since been back several times and each time I feel the same familiarity. I have zero memories of people or anything happening there, nothing like the past life stuff like my daughter used to talk about. It's more the building itself that I can identify rather than any spooky experiences. My husband jokes that maybe I was one of the ladies who dressed her, that I was her maid in a past life. And there's not much that has changed, so... Imagine that you live your past life being a woman who dressed a girl in a big house and then... In your next life, you're dressing the same girl. You've both, you know, you've both been reborn to relive that life, but in a slightly different way. That is wild, though, that you went to this house and just knew instinctively where everything was. Knew where secret rooms were. And a lot of those big old houses, they did have secret rooms or secret doorways that led off into different rooms, etc. And a part of that was to allow servants Um, to be able to move around kind of almost unseen throughout the house. So that's not particularly unusual, but I think it's absolutely wild that you were just overwhelmed with this familiarity and this sense of knowing. Like, I wonder if it is something to do with a past life or even something to do with like a generational knowledge. How wild. These are the types of situations where I feel like, you know, you can do that past life regression hypnosis stuff. I know there's a lot of controversy about that because of, you know, suggestibility, etc., etc. But I just would love to know. I'd love to know if there was a past life connection to that house or a, a generational connection to that house. Customers are rushing to your store. Do you have a point of sale system you can trust? Or is it <clears throat> a real POS? You need Shopify for retail. Shopify POS is your command center for your retail store. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify has everything you need to sell in person. With Shopify, you get a powerhouse selling partner that effortlessly unites your in-person and online sales into one source of truth. Track every sale across your business in one place and know exactly what's in stock. Connect with customers in line and online. Shopify helps you to drive store traffic with plug and play tools built for marketing campaigns from TikTok to Instagram and beyond. Get hardware that fits your business. Take payments by smartphone, transform your tablet into a point of sale system or use Shopify's POS Go Mobile device for a battle tested solution. Plus Shopify's award winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Do retail right with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com forward slash real life ghost stories all lower case. Go to shopify.com slash real life ghost stories to take your retail business to the next level today. That's shopify.com slash real life ghost stories.
Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. This time of year can be a lot and the run up to the holiday season can trigger a lot of negative feelings for a lot of people. For some, it might feel overwhelming, it might make you feel anxious and for others, it might trigger feelings of sadness, of feeling alone and of feeling lost. And if you resonate with any of those feelings, there are some steps that you can take in your life to counteract some of those feelings. Therapy can give you the tools to feel grounded and manage everything that is going on over the holiday period. So I am a big advocate for therapy. I am in therapy every single week. And for me, therapy has been a way for me to unpack stuff that's going on in my life, to try and develop positive coping skills. And I think it's really important to say that therapy isn't just for people who've experienced major trauma. Therapy can have a really positive impact on your life, no matter what you're going through. BetterHelp is entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible and suited to your schedule, which I think is really important in this day and age. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Visit betterhelp.com slash real life ghost stories today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P dot com slash real life ghost stories. Today's episode is brought to you by Factor. The holiday season can be such a jam packed, busy time. And you might be thinking, how am I going to fit in nutritious, flavorful meals to fuel me on these crazy, busy days? Factor is America's number one ready to eat meal delivery service and they can help you to eat well for breakfast, lunch and dinner by offering chef prepared, dietitian approved, ready to eat meals delivered straight to your door. Sometimes when life gets too hectic, meal prepping ends up taking a back seat. But with Factor, you can skip the meal planning, the grocery shopping, the chopping, the prepping, the cleaning up, etc. And get Factor's fresh, never frozen meals delivered to your door. They are literally ready in two minutes. So all you have to do is heat it up and enjoy. You can choose from over 35 chef crafted meals every single week. And these meals can be chosen to meet your specific preferences. So whether you are vegan or veggie or you want extra protein, whatever it is, head to factormeals.com slash real life ghost stories 50 and use code real life ghost stories 50 to get 50% off. That's code real life ghost stories 50 at factormeals.com slash real life ghost stories 50 to get 50% off. And story number three comes from Emily. I have a story about the whistler to share. The wind kicked up after a hot and humid afternoon on August the 2nd. I had the windows open to enjoy some of nature's air conditioning because here in Switzerland, they're not big fans of actual AC. As I put my daughter to bed, I heard something far off in the distance. It whistled one long sustained note. It was the E note on a piano, sustained almost like a whole note in a piece of music. (whistles) Then there was a long pause, and then another whistle, but closer this time, another long E whole note. (whistles) After another slightly shorter pause, there came another whistled E even closer this time, that same plodding whole note. (whistles) Having listened to multiple tales about the whistler on your podcast, by now I was starting to worry, wondering what in the world was happening. It must be the wind whistling through the house, right? Repeating the E on a scale. That's normal, right? Or is it? Or could it be the whistler somewhere nearby getting closer as I took my child into bed? After a shorter pause this time, there was more whistling, but this time just outside my window, this time the notes were shorter, closer together, rhythmic even. Each one, like a quarter note, whistled one after another after another, almost as if there was a beat to them. (coughs) 
thoroughly freaked, I jumped up from my daughter's bed and looked out the window in time to see a person riding his bicycle past our house and on up the road. As I tried to catch my breath and slow my heart rate, I repeated the notes in my head, finally hearing the melody. (coughs) Yep, the thing I feared was the whistler was actually some dude whistling jingle bells on a hot and humid August evening in a little village in Switzerland. While I know that this tale didn't end up on anything actually paranormal, I'm still laughing about that inner fear, that roiling turmoil building in my gut until the eventual realisation that my mind had created something much more sinister than a whistling bicyclist. Why is that person whistling jingle bells in August on a hot, humid August evening? Give that a rest. Everybody knows that until Mariah Carey and Michael Bublé thaw out for the winter, you are not allowed to be singing whistling christmas songs it's just not acceptable i do love that though emily like how your your immediate thought is shit it's the whistler shit something terrible is going to happen to me etc etc and it always reminds me of that story about that person who was on their way home and they could hear this whistling sound and they thought they were being chased by somebody playing a flute like genuinely thought that full of fear and then they realized it was the wind whistling through the holes in the crutches that they were using to hobble home And I I, honestly, I love moments like that when you are so freaked, you are so frightened. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, no, actually, I'm absolutely fine. (laughs) It's not the whistler. It's not somebody chasing me with a flute. It is the wind howling through my crutches or it is a man on a bicycle that is whistling jingle bells. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode and thank you to Penelope, Alva and Emily for sending in your stories. Remember the last story came from August the 2nd, 2023. And if you're wondering, if you're sitting there thinking, why is this episode so short? Well, there's a couple of reasons for that. Well, actually, there's one big reason for that because from the 17th of December to the 31st of December 2023, we will be doing 15 days of festive fear. I will be at home in Ireland and I am pre-recording 15 mini episodes to be released one every single day for the Christmas period. Also, just to add, I am very aware of the ongoing issues with advertising on the podcast. I have spoken about this a couple of weeks ago on a mini episode. And just to reiterate, I am aware of the deluge of ads. I am aware that the content of some of those ads is completely inappropriate. The result of which is that I am moving podcast hosting platforms in a couple of weeks time in order to try and alleviate some of those issues. I appreciate everyone who's reached out to me to say, hey, this feels like something's going on here in your advertising. And I appreciate people's patience with it too. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you would like to send in your story, you can do so by emailing it to reallifeghoststoriespodcast.gmail.com. You can also check out the website reallifeghoststoriespodcast.com. And if you are desperate for some extra spooky content, you can subscribe to the Patreon. That is patreon.com forward slash reallifeghoststories, where for $5 a month or $2 a month, you get access to heaps of extra content, as well as every single main and mini episode completely ad free. And on that note, I shall see you next time. 